I've been asked many a time in comments about a guide to designing 3D prints, so I thought I'd relent. This is designed to be a simple crash course for all you new 3D print enthusiasts who are keen to start designing your own models, but don't know where to start. Now, buying a 3D printer opens up a wonderful world of possibility for people, but being able to custom design things for yourself is like a different level of awesome power. But the idea of diving into CAD design can be intimidating, especially when the software is a dizzying array of options, menus, and scary looking commands. This video is going to reveal to you my four golden rules of CAD design for 3D printing that you need to develop. They're basically cheat codes so that you can get up and running super fast. I go through these every time that I need to create a new 3D model, yet they may not be what you expect. If you think you're going to learn CAD in 15 minutes, you're wrong. This is about the concept, not the instructions. Right, let's start going through these four rules. The first rule of designing your own custom 3D prints is do not create your own 3D prints. There are literally millions of free 3D prints out there for pretty much everything you can imagine. So the first habit is to always search Thingiverse, Printables and Maker World to see what people have already designed. This can save you recreating a wheel on the one hand, but also it's a valuable source of ideas for any design that you do. You will always get thoughts and inspiration that you would never have come up with on your own. If you want a holder for your PS5 controller, there are hundreds. If you want a battery holder for your DeWalt power tools, there's hundreds. If you want a 3D printed cable management solution for your entire desk, well, there's only one solution you need for that. But the point is, really, get into this habit. You will find that almost always someone has already done a design for you. So your custom print is instantly ready. And even if it's not, then it'll give you loads of ideas. The second rule of designing your own custom 3D prints is do not create your own 3D prints. Go back to those sites and broaden your search terms and include the magical word parametric. Parametric files are files where key dimensions are included as variables so that you can adjust them. And this means that you can just open them, change the parameters to suit your power strip or whatever, and ta-da, you have a perfectly custom print for your needs. There are hundreds of these cool generators online. There's cool apps like OpenSCAD and Fusion 360 supports this too, with loads of plugins available. If you look at my underwear collection, you'll know there's almost infinite ways that you can create your own custom size using generators. This file alone could be instantly adjusted to extend and stretch to accommodate thousands of items within the home. And there are tons of really powerful generators online for things like this. So Gridfinity is another one. So every box, grid and container can be customized. There's even ones that let you generate your own cutouts for objects from photos. Now, later in this video, I'll share something I've built on my site that provides an ultimate index of all these cool sorts of files. So this will give you loads and loads of great resources for parametric file generation. Now, with the first two habits, we really have already taken out the vast majority of your needs. These cater for 70 to 80% of all the files that I use to organize my home. And this is actually the first point that you should actually open a 3D CAD package. I use Autodesk Fusion 360. We're using Fusion 360 here, not because it's perfect, because it's powerful and accessible. Deal with it. For the purpose of 3D print model design, I find this is much better than say Blender, which focuses more on artistic and organic modeling. Having said that, I'm not a huge fan of Autodesk. 
as they're a bit autodesk. But the programme itself is great as it allows me to design both 3D prints and CNC cuts in one programme, which is handy when I'm building things that require both. Yet, whatever package you use, the main trick to designing your own files is don't. Why start from scratch when there are so many shoulders of giants that you can already stand on? The 3D print community is awash with wonderful designs that people have graciously shared for remix and reuse. Just look at Zach's wonderful Gridfinity community as an example. Likewise, I share all my designs in a similar fashion, but this is important as other people will have already bang their heads on the solutions. So why start from scratch solving the same problems? Basing your work on existing designs also means that you build a community further towards a standard. Only a Muppet would craft a website by writing every line of HTML, CSS and JavaScript and more themselves these days. Use the frameworks that already exist and build on them. So everything can interoperate. So get into the habit of starting with a model to remix wherever you can and let other people do 80% of the work for you. Now using AI is currently fourth in my order of habits, but as it advances in capability, it's certain to rise. However, already there are lots of tools out there that are worth a check before you start modeling. Again, even if all it does is give you a handy place to start. AI tools, in my experience, are currently far better at organic modeling than designing logical shapes. So whilst this isn't much help yet for drawing an accurate Gridfinity organizer, they're pretty interesting when it comes to designing your D&D character or cartoon figure. You can naturally use these as a baseline for them editing and adjusting in mesh-based sculpting software, or even just for inspiration for your own designs. But whatever you do, do not upload an AI-generated image to any of the 3D print archives. This is starting to drive everyone nuts. Now we're actually going to start modeling. Tutorials and intros to CAD software often start with fairly exhaustive overviews of all the buttons and parametrics and menus. Now, I'm not saying that these aren't useful, they really are powerful, but the vast, vast majority of your basic modeling needs require only six concepts. So let's crash through them and I'll show you how you can get up to speed super fast by focusing on these tools. Firstly, the sketch. Fusion operates with 2D sketches as the starting planes for your designs. Think of these like architectural plans that you can then pull the walls and 3D files out of. This operates with a bunch of very self-explanatory options that you will be able to play around with immediately if you've ever used PowerPoint or Illustrator or any other program with vectors. A circle draws a circle, a square draws a square, text draws whoa, you're already getting this, and so on. This is really it, and it has all the clicking to grid and other capabilities that you'll be used to. There's loads of cool features to help with alignment and centering and constraining, but for the absolute basics, this is all you need to know. Click to create sketch and create your sketch. The second command is then extruding. Having created the first two dimensions in your 2D sketch, this then pulls out the third dimension. You just click on your sketch shapes, select it screwed, and then pull it out as far as you fancy. Now, one thing to note here is that you can extrude shapes to not just create objects, but to cut out of existing objects as well. So by extruding a solid box, you can then extrude another shape through it to cut a hole. These Boolean operator commands allow you to tell Fusion which one you actually want 
So by combining cut, join and other options, you can play around with different shapes. The final command sets are revolves and lofts. These let you combine two dimensions to create shapes. So you can spin a sketch around a particular axis to create rotated 3D shapes. And this is awesome for vases, cups, balls, or anything cylindrical. Lofts let you pull a shape out along a path that you create. And this is great for custom shapes and designs. So if I was being super purist, these three skills alone are all you'd need to start off with. But I'll give you three more. Firstly, patterns. Now, it's quite often in 3D prints, you'll want to have repetitive patterns, regularly spaced holes for a pen holder or a grid of SD card slots or rows of neat curves for your CNC bits. Being able to pattern your sketches and features is super helpful. They tend to come in various flavors based on rectangular, circular or pass based patterns but the logic's the same. Click the shape that you want to repeat, drag the dimensions you want to cover, and then choose the number of copies. This is great because you can easily adjust them in future if you change your mind. Plus you can be sure that they all line up neatly along the dimensions that you specify. This lets you create grooves, holes, grills, and grips really quickly and easily. Next, let's add a little aesthetic and printability to your models. Chamfers add angled bevels to edges that you select. This is crucial for 3D prints as it means that you can tackle any overhangs by grading between edges. This removes the need for supports when you print. Chamfers are my go-to for anything on the Z axis. Fillets are much the same, but they allow you to quickly create curved edges on objects. Pick up something on your desk and look at it. Whether it's your phone, your keyboard, your pen organizer, or anything else, it almost always has a fillet of some sort on every edge, no matter how subtle. This lets you move your designs from boxy to styled with a few clicks. Now, if you're looking to measure a fillet on one of your devices, then Feel free to just download my fillet gauges on my website for free, and this will help you get the perfect fit. Now, the final thing that you'll find super useful is dimensions and parameterized dimensions. Just hit D on your keyboard and select two parts of your sketch, and you'll see it creates a dimension. You can then just click to edit this and your shape changes. This is super handy as it means that you can easily adjust your model once you've made it. This happens all the time in 3D printing as you'll want to adjust your sizes to fit perfectly, or you'll come back to a design and want to increase the size of something. For any coders out there, parameters just let you create variables. So you click here and in this menu, you can create parameters for anything you want. I tend to sketch out all the key dimensions for my object that I might want to change. The other thing I often add are parameters for clearance for parts that fit together. The benefit of this is firstly that you can type these parameters as a variable in lots of places and your shapes will automatically adjust if you change them. But secondly, you can also combine parameters. So for example, I can say object width plus clearance and it'll automatically add these together. Then here I can say object height plus clearance, and it'll insert the clearance value here too. So you can see how super handy this can be because you can then just adjust one value and it'll update dozens of dimensions in your design. And that's it really. With these golden rules and six commands, you really will be able to design just about anything you need for 3D printing, woodworking, and much more. I really would stress that you should try and keep to these simple commands initially to really cement your knowledge. You'll realize that just about every device in your home could be modeled with just these skills. So whilst of course, there's a whole world of cool stuff I haven't shown you, these are really the universal skills to get you motoring. It really is amazing 
how often you will use these commands. And finally, as I've already said, this is not the end of the journey. There's naturally tons more that you can learn and picking up all the other capabilities will make your designs even better. Patreons and YouTube members, please do join the discussion on Discord and ask any silly questions you fancy and I or anyone else will be able to help you find your feet in learning CAD. Now, get busy making things and experts out there, share your tips below so everyone can learn. See you next time, folks. You're still here. That says something about you. Most people tap out halfway through, but not you. You're different. As a reward, here's your golden ticket. A stash of parametric files just for the finishers. <laughs>